In this video, we go over how to trace and analyze the complexity of the linear search algorithm. The linear search finds an item in a sorted or unsorted list. Linear search starts at the first item in the list and checks each item one by one. Think about searching for a card in a shuffle deck, starting with a top card and checking each one until you find the card you want. The linear search doesn't require the data set to be in order. It can be efficient for smaller data sets and is inefficient for large data sets. The linear search is ideal for finding items in small data sets and searching unordered data such as settings files. Typical use for linear search would be the find and replace function in a word processor. It is the easiest searching algorithm to implement, but usually the most inefficient. If illustrations help you remember, this is how you can visualize a linear search. We start by initializing a couple of variables with their starting state. Found. So this Boolean value is used to indicate whether the item we're searching for has been found or not. So we start by setting it to false. And index. This specifies the current position in the data set, starting at zero. And we'll assume the data being searched is stored in a simple data structure like an array or list. We then enter a while loop that will continue to execute while the following two conditions are met. Found equals false and index is less than the length of the items array or list. In other words, the program will keep executing this loop until it either finds the item or reaches the end of the data set. Each time around the loop, the program checks to see if the current item is the one we're searching for. If it is, the program sets the boolean flag found to true, which will cause the loop to exit at the start of the next iteration. If it isn't, we increment the index variable by one, meaning that the next time around the loop, the program will be checking against the next location in the data set. This is the bare bones of the algorithm. In its current form, it doesn't actually have a data set to search against or anything to do if the item is found, so we would need to implement additional code. For example, once the algorithm has executed, we could check the found variable. If it's true, we could further check the index variable to discover the item is located within the data set. Here is some syntactically correct Python code that demonstrates the linear search algorithm in practice. We have added a hard-coded list called items, which contains five American states and an input asking the user to enter a state. Let's assume the user was looking for Delaware. This string will be stored in the variable item to find. We've also added code to output whether the item was found and its position in the list if it was. We start by initializing the variables index to zero and found to false. The program checks to see if it needs to enter the while loop. Found equals false is true. Index is less than length of items is also true because index is zero, the length of the items array is five, zero is less than five, is true. We hit an if statement and check if items index equals items to find. Well, items index is items zero and item zero is Florida. The item to find is Delaware. Florida equals Delaware is false. So we jump to the else part of the if statement and increment the value of the index variable by one. The program checks if it needs to enter the while loop again. Found equals false is currently true. Index is less than length of items is also true. Index is now one. The length of the items array is five. One is less than five is true. So we're back inside the while loop and we hit the if statement and check if 
items index equals item to find. Well, items one, because that's what index is now is Georgia, and item to find is Delaware. Georgia equals Delaware is still false. So again, we jump to the else part of the if statement and increment the value of the index variable by one. The program checks again if we need to enter the while loop. It's the same situation as the previous two times. Found equals false is true, and the number held in index is still less than the length of the array. We hit the if statement and check if items index equals item to find. Well, index is two, so our items two is Delaware. Item to find is Delaware. Delaware equals Delaware is, of course, true. We found a match. So this time we execute the first part of the if statement and set the value of the found variable to true. The program checks if we need to enter the while loop again. Found equals false is now false because obviously found is true. However, the other part of the while loop remains true. As the while loop requires both conditions to be true and they're not, we don't enter the loop again. Instead, we continue with the rest of the program. We check to see if found is equal to true, which it currently is. So we execute the first part of the if statement, which outputs to the user item found at position two. So what is the efficiency of a linear search? Well, in the best case, the item to be found is going to be the first item in the data set. In this situation, the linear search performs as well as a binary search when the first item is in the middle of the list. So that's O1 constant. And that means the linear search can perform better than a binary search on very small data sets. Of course, in the worst case, the item to be found is the last one on the list or not in the list at all. So all the items need to be checked. So it's O N linear. Typically, the item to be found will be somewhere in the data set, and as the data set grows, more searching must be performed. Therefore, the algorithm has a complexity of O N or linear. Now, before you go, please stick around for some final thoughts on the linear search. So, is this the definitive pseudocode and Python code for linear search? Well, the answer is yes and no. For a start, pseudocode doesn't have a fixed formal syntax, and even if you choose a specific high-level programming language like Python, that doesn't mean there's only one way of coding an algorithm. Now, this point is really important. Even with a simple algorithm like the linear search, you may see slightly different versions in textbooks, past exam papers, and other videos. It all comes down to how you choose to implement the algorithm when you write it in code. Now, this can seem quite counterintuitive to both students and teachers when first learning the subject. Please, please try to get away from the idea that one particular implementation of an algorithm is correct and therefore any other variations must have mistakes. This is not the case. So, if the choice of how to implement an algorithm isn't the deciding factor on whether that algorithm is correct or not, what is? Well, an algorithm is correct if it produces the correct result for all input instances. And that's it. So a linear search algorithm must be able to locate an item in a data set if it exists. Be able to locate the item regardless of whether the data set is sorted or unsorted. Run without crashing even if the item being searched for doesn't exist in the data set. And check each item sequentially starting with the first item. Here we've made a small change in the first part of the while loop. We've replaced found equals false with not found. This is a very minor change, but something that can be done in virtually all programming languages. Regardless, this is still a valid and thus correct implementation of the linear search. Here, the change is more dramatic. We've moved the index equals index plus one line of code 
that previously sat inside the else section of the if statement. In this version, the value of index is incremented by one each go around the loop. To make sure the algorithm outputs the correct location of the item, we would simply adjust the output line. Print item found at position index minus one. These changes don't break the algorithm, it's just different. You could argue it's slightly less efficient, but it's still a linear search. In this implementation, we're not even using a while loop, we're using a for loop instead. This version is iterating through the entire dataset, regardless of whether it's found the item it is searching for or not. We've introduced an extra variable called counter and an if statement, which we're using to track the position where the item is found in the dataset. Now you could argue that this is a poor implementation of the linear search algorithm. However, it's still a linear search. Here's the original version. It may have already occurred to you that the way we've implemented this algorithm also has its limitation. This version exits as the first occurrence of the item we're searching for is found. What if there are multiple occurrences of the item in the dataset? Maybe you want to find the first occurrence, the last occurrence, all occurrences. It all comes down to how you choose to implement the algorithm. We'll present you with a method we feel is efficient, simple and clear, but in the exam, make sure to read any question that expects you to code an algorithm carefully. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. Can you successfully implement a linear search in a high level programming language of your choice? And do you understand how a linear search works? And can you trace its code to explain how it works? Dave and I know that data structures and algorithms are one of the hardest areas of the course. And we've therefore written a dedicated book, which is available to purchase on Amazon. The book covers all the data structures and algorithms you need to be aware of for the exam. Each one has its own dedicated chapter. The chapter overviews the data structure or algorithm, gives you applications, operations, links to our videos online, and goes over the algorithm in simple structured English, a visualization, pseudocode, and is fully coded in Python, C Sharp, and Visual Basic. Thank you.